video that I probably should have done before I did any other videos, and it should be number one probably on my on my YouTube, but it's not going to be, but it's going to be there now, is what to do before you even spend money, what to do before you even go to the store, what to do before you decide on how many panels, how many batteries, how big, what charge, before you do any of that. There's a few things that are going to give you a, a whole bunch better idea of A, what it's going to cost, what you're going to need, what it'll take to do what you want to do with it, where you're going to do with what you want to do with it, and how you can do it all. Um, one of the first things you should do is, is try to decide uh, what you're going to want to power and, well, you know, make a buffer on top of that. But I call it a personal injury. Uh, injury. How about a personal energy audit? God, I can't even. My mom's a speech language pathologist. How about a personal energy audit, uh, which is taking every single electrical device that you have, um, everything made after like 1950 something was legally required to have all the specifications written on them. Every single device you have, even down to your batteries, they'll have you know the little tiny fine print somewhere, or a sticker, or a stamp, or an engraving, or something. It, you, you can't buy an electrical device without that stuff physically being on it. Why? Because everything takes an, a different amount of juice, and if you're going to be safe with your power consumption, whether you're on or off grid, sometime you're going to need to know that. We've kind of got away from looking at it in the modern convenience of today, but uh, when you're doing off grid, it's going to be very important because it's not just plugging into the grid where it's unlimited and it doesn't matter what you're using and how many you're using at a time or when. Um, that's different with off grid. Uh, off grid, you're going to want to know, you know, how much it, every little thing takes. Maybe not down to battery packs, but um, a good place to start is the, with the biggest things. You know, if you're going to have an air conditioner, that your whole system is going to be designed around that. You're going to have electric heat. That's also going to be designed. Yeah, that'll be your biggest draws, and there just won't be anything else. Well, I mean, I won't say that. I, you, there's some like some MIG welders out there that are going to take more power than that. But normal everyday things that people will want to be using will. Uh, that will be the largest draws are going to be appliances like that air conditioners heaters washers and dryers uh drying clothes with with electricity is one of the most extreme inefficient um processes that you could use to dry your own clothes uh there's definitely some more efficient models out there but uh trying to have enough power to do a family of five laundry while an air conditioner and heater are running simultaneously sometimes um can get quite consumptive all at the same time and not to say that it's not possible you just need to know that before you go into trying to price or design or uh, pick out hardware and components for a solar system so the first thing that i would do is decide oh, am i going to need an air conditioner am i going to need a heater am i going to be cooking with electricity hopefully you are because it's 10 times cheaper cleaner and easier if not uh then that won't be part of your audit i guess that'll be another fossil fuel expense but um, those are going to be three huge things. Washer and dryers will be next. Um, I'm trying to think of what other major, you know, uh, those are those are pretty much the, the main huge draws that most people are going to have. Unless you have like a, a computer software editing desktop setup that's going to have towers and stuff and monitors that are 20. You know, those things start to add up over on top of each other. And, you know, a lot of people have a bunch of stuff that I don't have. I live fairly minimally. You want to be part of this too? You want What are you going to add? What, what, what's your word you, you just you just want to look cute tell everybody to make sure they're cute before. oh that's what you're gonna do come over and knock the guitar over on me that's not very helpful Scarlett I'm trying to get through this in 15 minutes or less and that's not helping anyway the energy audit is definitely going to get you much more of an idea of what a you're gonna want to use and how efficient those things are going to be and sometimes people have gone as far as to sell the appliances that they have and bought new appliances of the same type just more efficient smaller or uh, uh, 12 volt in some cases like refrigerators there's a lot of 12 volt refrigerator options out there that are a whole bunch more efficient than uh, the ones that you pick up at uh, anywhere home depot or lowe's or whatever wherever they buy refrigerators from but i don't have a lot of that so sometimes I, I forget about it it's probably why i didn't do this video in the first place is because I was starting my system with very few even appliances of my own. I was going from scratch. I didn't bring anything to the table. I was creating it all from day one. So I didn't really think about this a whole lot from my standpoint, but definitely after four or five dozen you know, people that I have coached through this whole process, they tend to have the, t the scales flip there a little bit when they start saying, I want a full-size refrigerator and I want 
washer and dryers and I want two air conditioners in my 40 foot butt. I'm not trying to make fun of any of that. That's just uh, stuff that's going to cost more regardless of what way you go and going to require more. Um, air conditioners are definitely going to be uh, different models. You know, those mini splits out there, uh, those aren't cheap, but they're definitely the world's most like efficient heater and or air conditioner. Maybe at the same time. I've never known of anybody do that, but uh, most of those air conditioners, even the 12,000 BTUs, uh, don't take much over eight or nine amps at 120 volts. Uh, you know, getting up over a kilowatt per hour with a heater or a, a, an air conditioner is really easy to do when you go buy the cheap window units. And even if you buy those sometimes, like it depends, those, those are all different sizes. I've got my window unit that I only use for six weeks out of the year because I'm not in an air conditioned climate. Um, that one costed me $120. It's for 150 square feet. It fits right perfectly in either one of my windows. And it, not, I think the largest uh, draw I ever saw, I started it up one day and it hit like 450, 450 watts, um, which is pfft, uh, not anywhere close to uh, even those mini splits. Those mini splits on high will be eight, 900 watts. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I, there's a lot of different specifications on those. But my major appliances are, is that air conditioner. I mean, I mow my lawn. I rotate till my garden with electricity all from this system. Uh, those aren't. Those, those seem like big draws, and I, I, I brag about them sometimes, or at least show how they're uh, possible with multiple things running at the same time. That's just really to prove my system. But, you know, the 21-inch the uh, lawnmower takes 13 amp, or 12 and a half amps at 120 volts, and that's a lot, but, you know, it only takes me 20 minutes to mow the lawn. It's not like that's going to be running for hours and hours like an air conditioner. Same thing with the rototiller and my chainsaws and everything else. It's impressive to say that I can do that and turn them all on at once and say, look, look, look. But A, nobody ever does that. And B, nobody's ever going to be running those for hours and hours and hours. Um, so part of that audit is to write all those appliances down. Go and look them all, all on the, uh, the specifications on them. Every one of them is going to have two of the three major uh, components of the equation, meaning what, what's the golden rule of, of uh, all electricity everywhere on this planet, at least? Uh, you can't answer. That's really stupid of me to pause. It's watts times, or I mean, excuse me, volts times amps equals watts, vice versa, whatever. So every one of these is going to have two of those. It might give you the amps. It might give you the watts. It might give you the volts, and it might give you the watts. It might, it's going to have two of them, and you're going to be able to figure it out either way. Um, once you have all those written down, how many hours a day you want to e use each one of that or those uh, appliances or devices, that's part of your audit. And you'll be able to determine how many watts, how many kilowatts, how many whatever you're going to want to try to use. You know, if your air conditioner like mine takes 450 watts and you want to run that for six hours, that's 450 watts times six hours, whatever that is, that will be your energy audit that you'll write down for your 24 hours. That, that's the other thing. The audit should only be for 24 hours at a time, whatever you're going to be wanting to use in any given 24-hour period and definitely make it the highest 24, like in the middle of the summer is going to be more for your air conditioner or vice versa with your heat. Um, always go, always round up, always go for the, the bigger uh, time of year or the more consumption, whatever you're going to have. Um, after that, I would physically start looking at your real estate on your bus, on your wherever you're putting all this. How much room do you have? How much room for how many panels are you going to be able to fit uh, this way or that way or wherever you want to put them? Um, that starts to become an issue with some people that want a deck or they want uh, to keep their hatches or they want to put something that, you know, um, I didn't really care. I, did, I was only using my roof for solar panels. I got room for one more up there if I wanted to, but I don't need it I'd like it just don't have it yet so real estate could come into play solar panels are all different sizes um, most of the solar or most of the residential ones are going to be fairly close they'll be between 30 38 inches to about 44 inches wide and they, it's a bigger gap length they can be from like 55 inches all the way up to like 80 depending some it's just a brand name whether or not they're mono crystalline or polycrystalline there's just a lot of different options out there so once you've got your real estate then you'll know what brand what size where you can fit them how you can fit them how you're going to install them um, from there I would oh part of your audit oh, I'm going to jump back to that it's it's kind of part of the audit but how many people are going to be using the system I'm one person sometimes two in, in my setup here and my dog that likes to whine apparently but uh that, you know, the more people, the more phones, the more tablets, the more computers, the more laundry, the more air conditioning, the more heating, or whatever it is, uh, it's just going to be more. Um, and on that energy audit, if 
you've got something that like like your computer is taking whatever 200 uh, watts an hour that you're gonna want it for two hours you've got a teenage sibling or a teenage uh, whatever child that wants to use it for two hours a day also obviously that's gonna have to be factored into the whole audit um, families it's not impossible that you just the requirements go up and then the money gets more are you going to be full time with all these people or half time or quarter time or weekend warriors or whatever that also goes into the play you don't need to go top of the line to buy as much maximum this and that if you're only going to be taking the thing out for one week a year um, where where are you going to be using it you're going to be in the southern hemisphere you're going to be at the equator you're going to be up at the 50th parallel somewhere in Canada uh, and when you know where and wind are kind of the same thing I mean if you're going to be a summer warrior or if you're going to be a full-timer chasing the Sun Belt you know that's that's definitely going to play into your solar requirements and what you'll be able to run with it all um, that also goes into how uh, that all kind of one could say everything that I just talked about is part of the audit uh, but where and when and who is kind of how many times to multiply that audit I guess if you will for the lack of a better explanation um, the where definitely comes into play because you know you get up into New England or I'm at the 44th parallel 4300 feet above sea level uh, my power uh, production almost cut by two-thirds from July to December uh, January well after December obviously after December 22nd the solstice or first whatever year it is you start going back the other way and I've done a couple of videos where I'm literally watching the seasons change from my uh, charge controller because two weeks ago I would wake up at 9 o'clock and there would only be one volt and now I'm waking up at 9 o'clock and there's 1.75 volts you know uh, it really does depend on the how the Sun is coming over you you know the closer you get to the equator obviously the more more production that's why you go to Florida and there's 900 trillion off-grid solar places and people want to do off-grid solar down there because it's you don't even have to factor that in some of the times but where I'm at that's that that's why I want a third panel if, if you're curious is I obviously made it through the uh, winter here but it wasn't live in luxury if I had one more panel I would be producing you know my 600 watts got uh, reduced to 150 at some of the times at the lowest times there I would still be able to do you know 250 hopefully with another panel I don't I don't know until I do that but uh, that would be the only reason. Uh, anyway, this is a video of what to think about before. Um, I think we, I mean, without getting too hardcore into anything, I mean, you know, make your audit, find out how much room you got, how many people are going to be using it. 12 volt appliances are another thing you can, if you start doing that energy audit and you've got a refrigerator that you thought you were going to be wanting to use, but you find out that it's going to be one and a half kilowatts per 24 hours, you can probably find a 12 volt version that's roughly the same size, maybe slightly smaller. But it will definitely make up or make your mind up, I guess, uh, the, the little less space for the 12 volt because you can take that. A couple examples from people that I know, they, they had a one was a 1.2 kilowatts or let's go with that 1.2 kilowatts a day. I think they got a 12 volt one that's now down to uh, three or 400 watts a day. I mean, so that can really make a huge difference if you have some of those larger things be 12 volt. There are no 12 volt air conditioners. I'm sorry, that's called a fan with a wet towel over it. But there are no electric, uh, well, even heaters or, uh, well, maybe there might be a 12 volt heater, but like that's going to be like a hand warmer, not keep a bus warm type of deal. Um, how many people, uh, well, how many time? how long, how much, not how long, how much you're going to want to use it? Is it full time, part time, whatever, and where you're going to be using it? And the where can be, you know, a hard one to pinpoint, but you're either going to be driving it around, tra chasing warmer temperatures, or you know you're going to be staying still somewhere uh, parked and deal with the winter or, or, or summer, vice versa, or whatever. But I don't know if I stayed under 15 minutes. I hope I did. Um, I think, as far as I can come up with, I made my little list here. That's that's the major things. There's probably some other things that you, as you get into it further, but I just wanted to make a, a couple checklist things that you don't even have to spend a penny to do. You can figure that out. And it'll at least give you a place to start and I, that's about it I guess so hopefully I answered a couple of questions and the dog was kind of cute there until next time